I know you've been checking your Rolex watches. And yes, it has come down to that time again. Harold O'Clock. There has been a reply to my video on Harold Boulder from a dude called Cody Plucker, claiming that Harold is a good guy and didn't commit a scam with the Italian tourist guide because there are many videos of him giving money to poor Indian men that he didn't sleep with. First off, this seems a strange way to defend a charge. I guess if someone is accused of rape, we can point to a few instances when they didn't rape someone and say it means they're innocent. Strange logic. But I'll address it anyhow, because this is the main defense people come up with for Harold. He's a good guy because he quote does good unquote. What do they mean by he does good? I guess they're referring to when Harold throws some money at poor people in third world countries and explicitly films it. It's obviously a PR move. This is the same guy who wrote an article telling men in Thailand how to f go go dancers for free on his personal private blog. You think that kind of mentality all of a sudden changes at the age of 40. He'd been traveling to poor countries since he was 18 and never did anything remotely charitable in two whole decades. And not once in his hundreds of Rouge pickup artist forum posts or his numerous personal blog posts and comments did he even one single solitary time mention charity or any concern for the disadvantaged in those countries. He didn't donate a single thing to anyone there. Unless you consider semen a donation. Not one person in any of the numerous poor countries he visited received a single Norwegian krona unless it came with a load of Norwegian yogurt. Norway may be famous for oil but this guy was making it rain white oil on the poor natives faces. But coincidentally all this charity starts at middle age around the age of 40 at the exact same time when he's trying to build a YouTube career. Just a happy coinky dink, I guess. Sure people can change, but most don't. And of course this PR works. Many people have remarked, well, he seems condescending and treats people like zoo animals but I guess it's okay cause he threw a small fraction of his ad revenue made entirely possible by those same people he films at them, so he must be a good guy. I guess people in third world countries should be grateful for a few hundred dollars in exchange for their population being labeled scammers in every second video by Harold. In his mind I guess he thinks it's only fair because they are subhumans and don't deserve any better. He has gone to superhuman lengths to protect his own reputation by deleting entire blogs and even changing his usernames on pickup artist forums before deleting them. A two-step security process, very percipient of him. But he couldn't give a single fuck about how labeling people scammers and fakes on his videos that are viewed by millions will affect their in their country's own reputations. I guess he applies different standards to different people because as he says on his blog, he believes not all races are equal. And that Asians are intellectually inferior. Notice how he films people without regard in Asia and India. When he did this and was rebuffed in Italy, he said it was evidence that Italians were classy and were normal for not wanting to be filmed. So what does that say about the Asians and Indians who are happy to be filmed? That they are not normal? He obviously has some contempt for them. He is a good actor, so usually he hides it very well, but some of it still occasionally leaks out in his videos. For instance, in a recent video he instantly assumed a Vietnamese woman there was trying to rip him off when she started speaking Vietnamese to an old man. That was literally the only evidence he had that she spoke Vietnamese. He'd met her for only a few minutes and she was a vendor working on the pavement doing an honest job, but he instantly assumed she was dishonest. She had only spoken to him briefly in broken English. It seems strange to want to help people that you think are basically all schemers and liars. Unless you don't really care who it is you're helping and only want to capture some random charity footage to help build your brand. As I mentioned earlier, Harold used to run a blog called haroldbalder.com. He deleted it. Because now that he wants to start a new mainstream YouTube channel, he doesn't want his past writings haunting him anymore. But thanks to the magic of the internet, some things never disappear. I will leave a link to one of his seminal and most infamous writings in the description below. Back at this stage Harold was being a lot more honest. He had no reason to do anything charitable because back then it didn't serve a purpose. In this particular post, 
Harold details the strategy he used to exploit Thai hookers and in his own words, bang them for free. The post was written only a couple of years ago, so either he went through some momentous personality metamorphosis at nearly 40 years of age, or else this charity thing is a public relations ruse to get people to think he's a good guy and not a dude in Asia banging hookers in his own words. Analysis In the article Harold tells us how Thai girls mainly become pros for money because they are financially desperate. He uses this to exploit them further by sleeping with them without paying for it even though as a wealthy Norwegian, he was relatively well cashed up at the time and even using his excess wealth to buy a condo there as an investment property. But his ego wanted the boost of being able to dupe a poor Thai girl into giving it to him for free. His strategy basically boiled down to investing weeks into visiting these bars where pros hung out. He would cultivate a false image of being a naive, innocent, non-sexual young man. He said he would consciously not compliment the girls on their bodies or make any sexual remarks. He did this to stand out from the other losers and vultures as he called them. Note the disdain he had even at this stage for fellow travelers. He is one of those foreign travelers that thinks he's somehow superior to other travelers and tourists despite visiting the same places and doing the same things. In this case he visits and stays in Pattaya and sleeps with Thai hookers but still looks down on others for doing the same thing. He does this in his current Vietnam videos. He says white backpackers are all miserable. That's a big sweeping statement. I guess if you don't walk around with a big cheesy grin 24-7 then you don't deserve to travel like the mighty Harold. Anyways back to the article. Harold says that after getting his image out there and known and being recognized by the girls in the bars as someone different to other foreign men, he would then hang around town and wait to bump into one of the girls he deliberately made an impression on. He would be on the lookout for one in the number of girls he was hunting. He advised targeting 7 to 8 girls at a time and said it was impossible to miss bumping into all of them in everyday life because Pattaya was a small town. He said the Thai hoes were easy to spot by tattoos, blonde hair, heels, etc. After recognizing them in civilian life he would ask them on a date. They usually agreed because of the image he had cultivated. He advised not going somewhere fancy but setting yourself apart from the other orbiters, as he called them, by taking her somewhere cheap. He said this resulted in 99% bangs after the first date. So he basically wasted his time and theirs to deprive them of income, all to soothe his enormous ego, to prove he was better than the older so-called loser foreigners there. As an aside, his technique seems smart from the micro view since he saved a few bucks, but he neglected to put a value on time. Analysis. So this insight into Harold's mind is invaluable. This demonstrates how attuned Harold is to human psychology. He understands the mindsets of these girls and he twists it for his own ends. In this case he wants to get them in the sack. In our case he wants us to like him and see him as a good guy because it has an impact on his views and subscribers on his YouTube videos and hence his bottom line. It also shows us he's willing to put in time, a lot of time, to cultivate a false image to dupe others and accomplish a prepared objective. In the case of the Thai girls, he duped them with a false image of him being a naive, gullible, sexless, innocent young dude. In our case, he dupes us with an illusion of a philanthropic altruist who cares about third world suffering. The reality is he couldn't give two Norwegian shits. Conclusion Do I think Harold is a bad guy? No, not completely. I think he is nowhere near on the same scale or as much of a deviant or sociopath as bald and morally bankrupt. But I do think he's a ruthless entrepreneur and will do and say anything to increase his bottom line and fatten his wallet. He also doesn't mind hanging out with deviants and exploiters like bald but he doesn't consider himself one. He does some mental gymnastics to convince himself he's always in the right, like how he says he's not deceiving or lying to the girls despite deliberately cultivating an illusion to intentionally trick people into seeing him in a completely different light from his true self. But to be fair, at the end of the day, I don't think the girls he sleeps with regret their interactions with him as with bald, so it's hard for me to hate the guy. Their interactions haven't damaged them as people like the way bald has done to his victims. So with all that being said, do I think his altruism is genuine? Yes I do. About as genuine as his new porcelain teeth, Harold approves. 
Anyways what do you guys think? Please feel free to leave your comments and insults in the space below. And thanks to all the new subscribers. We recently broke through the 200 subscriber mark so there seems to be a lot of interest in these videos. The comments section has also been very lively. Matt Brick for example says, What the fuck's the point of these videos? The Roosh V forum was a great place to read and post for many years and by the way Roosh didn't nuke those sections of the forum without warning. John Doe states, I don't understand how people can keep defending bald. I mean this is a person that has thousands of posts on multiple pickup artist forums whose personality was honed over the years toward a single goal, how to pick up women in economically struggling regions of the world, have sex with them and dump them after. Not only that but also put in a lot of time in describing it to others on how to do all that as well. All his friendliness, his good deeds, his motivations behind his videos have to be questioned. And finally Charlie Dunn informs us. I mentioned your videos on Baldur's channel, and the petty bastard banned me. LOL. I guess Charlie hasn't heard of Harold's new SJW catchphrase. Harold is very triggered. If you're wondering I've taken a few cough lozenges so my voice might sound a bit different. Anyways, I guess you know what time it is? Yes it's that time of day again. Harold O'Clock. In this video we'll be looking at how Harold is using his charity fund for Zex. Harold says publicly that his patron money is used to support entrepreneurs. But in his Florence video he gave it to Martina, a young female tourist guide, he called her an entrepreneur. Before that he gave his YouTube plug to a homeless guy living in a tent. He also called this man an entrepreneur. Well I don't know about you guys, but these seem to be very liberal uses of the term entrepreneur. At this point Harold is calling basically anyone, and everyone, an entrepreneur. You're an Indian barber operating out of a shed you say? No you're not, you're an entrepreneur. You're a girl showing people the museums and city of Florence you say? No you're not, you're an entrepreneur. You're a homeless Italian man living in a tent in a park and shitting in bushes you say? No you're not. Harold says you're an entrepreneur. When was the last time you heard a homeless man living in a tent in a park and shitting in woods labeled as an entrepreneur? Some people would say this is extremely patronizing. It reminds me of George Carlin's skit on soft language. These poor people have been bullshitted by the system into believing that if you change the name of the condition, somehow you'll change the condition. Well, hey, cousin, doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Harold says he hates political correctness. But he goes around calling a homeless man an entrepreneur. Why is he using this strange euphemism? Instead of simply referring to things by their actual names. Isn't this what leftists do? The same leftists he disparages so much in his videos. Oh the irony. Anyway let's go to Harold's video titled giving $1100 to an Italian tourist guide. In the video if you notice when he hands her the money at the end you can see the girl is very very touched. She's literally on the point of tears. Harold himself says she was so emotional he had to stop filming in order to convince her off camera to take the money. This must have been a major episode then, because we know Harold never ever stops filming. He doesn't ever edit anything out these days. He and his friend bold and bankrupt live by the motto, never stop recording and always keep rolling tape. I mean Bold literally filmed a guy taking a shit for Christ's sakes. So what would it take for them to edit something out? Just imagine the hysterics this girl was in for Harold to break his cardinal rule. Now this girl has just accepted what to her is a huge cash gift from a man she barely knows. There is absolutely no doubt that she would feel in his debt. She would feel like she owes him big time. That she owes him a favor. A $1100 favor, to be exact. It would be very easy for someone in Harold's position to then exploit this situation and maneuver her into bed. Even if you have the personality of an inebriated fruit fly and the charisma of a plastic paper clip. But our Harold would never do such a thing right? We should not impugn his good name with our base thinking, I hear you say. Well, this is a reminder that he and Bold and Bankrupt have extensive histories of discussing techniques to bed girls in the Rouge V pickup artist forum. Bald has shown he is a master of the dark arts, and has a history of conniving and manipulating others. 
He has discussed pretending to be men's friends in poor Russian villages solely to gain sexual access to their girls. See my video on Bold and Bankrupt and his Oscar Schindler manipulation tactic. Bald also rented cars and relayed how he hid the rental key rings from girls, in order to deceive them into thinking that he owned those cars when trying to seduce them. Deception and theatricality are powerful agents to the uninitiated, as Batman's Bane would say. But would Harold himself do such a thing? Maybe he's not as manipulative as his friend Mr. Bald. Well, suspicions arise when we see the fact that Harold tried to hide all evidence of their rumored sexual encounter by deleting a recent video. What possible reason would Harold have to delete a video on the merits of a $90 Airbnb room versus a $90 hotel room in Florence? One convincing fan theory has been floated. Some eagle-eyed redditors noted in the Harold Boulder subreddit that there were two Coke Zero bottles on either side of the bed in this video. If you remember in a video shot earlier that day, Harold and Martina were both shown drinking from Coke Zero bottles. It certainly is a good case that they at least slept overnight together in the same bed after the video was done. And Harold's actions in trying to cover it up by deleting the video evidence is telling as well. Of course it's not a smoking gun, but you have to admit his actions certainly seem suspicious. Analysis Hardwired into our mental DNA is the need to reciprocate. When we receive a gift, the regions of the brain associated with emotion and decision making light up. Studies on the social and psychological aspects of this activity show that receiving a gift triggers a cognitive dilemma that must be resolved. The easiest way to resolve the conflict is to give something in return of equal or greater value. In psychology this is known as the theory of social reciprocity. There was an experiment published in 1971 by Dennis Reagan. The results of the study showed the power of giving. In the experiment a guy called Joe bought sodas for some people and not others, and that ended up influencing how many raffle tickets they would buy from him. What was especially strange was it didn't matter if they liked him or not. In the experiment the tester made sure some people disliked Joe by having him speak rudely over the phone. The result was that in cases where Joe did not buy people a coke they bought tickets based on whether they liked him or not. But, when he did buy them a coke this became irrelevant. Even the people who said they disliked him ended up buying twice as many tickets from him as the first group. And they bought many more raffle tickets than the cost of the soda. So as humans we have this natural tendency to pay people back that have done us a favor by doing them a bigger favor. And so by giving someone $1100 that they don't feel they deserve it sets up a pretty big feeling of social debt. That person will most likely try to pay you back in some way shape or form very soon. It's speculated that Harold manipulated this and misappropriated use of his so-called charity funds to get in the pants of the tourist guide in Italy. He has demonstrated how he exploits his understanding of human psychology to enrich himself in his recent video. In the video titled How to Get Millions of Views he mentions how familiarity is enough for people to think they like you. In other words the simple fact of being exposed to someone for enough time will trick our brains into thinking we like them. So Harold would likely know that regardless of whether a person likes you or not if you set them up with a gift they will be much more amenable to your demands or requests. Anyway, even if we give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he did it all without any thought or premeditation. Don't you think having sex with a so called charity recipient right after you give her a large sum of your donor's money seems like an abuse of charity funds? Then again perhaps in Harold's definition. A hooker is the epitome of an entrepreneur, since they take risks, work for themselves and run a private business. Harold approves. Anyways what do you think? Is what Harold did pretty sketchy? Is what he does a misuse of charity funds? Or is all fair in love and banging Italian tourist guides? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thanks to all the new subscribers, including Zaida Erafin and Zachary Gordon. We also got some interesting comments in my previous videos. Kamlesh Uji says, Harold doesn't seem as manipulative as Bald or as depraved as Tim, but I did wonder why he was so defensive in his patron donation videos. Steve H says, I knew something was wrong with Harold, he's mentally screwed. On the other hand, Mirthful Merchant counters with a comment that says, Harold has a good heart, you misunderstood him. 
Chippy got the most likes for his comment which says, I'm not gonna lie, since I saw Tim in Harold's vlogs, he always gave me this weird predator vibe. Finally, Leezy makes a great point. I'm never gonna look at the travel genre the same. How did Harold Boulder meet Tim K? Many people ask Harold where and how did you meet your friends like Noodles and Tim K? Harold has always been very coy about this. He usually plays it off with jokes etc. Some people presume he met them from his travels. The truth is that nearly all of Harold's current circle of friends was met through a pickup artist and sex tourist forum called Rouge V Forum. This is a site where self-proclaimed pickup artists gather to discuss tactics for which countries are best for sex tourism. The most popular countries discussed on this site are the Philippines and Thailand and the Ukraine and former Soviet countries. It hardly comes as a surprise then that Harold declares in one video that Kiev is the greatest city in Europe. I wonder what motivated him to exhort these praises upon these cities. Also no surprise that one of the countries Tim K has spent a lot of his time in is the Philippines, a notorious haven for sex tourism. And he also visits South America and the former Soviet countries. One thing they all have in common is a vibrant sex tourism industry. But maybe this is all coincidence you say. It could be. However we also discovered that Tim K used to write in the same sex tourist forums that Harold did. Tim K went under the alias of Washed Up Vet in the Rouge V Forum. Tim K boasted of his sexual exploits including having sex with an 18 year old this was when he was a 38 year old man. He is now in the Philippines shacking up with a young local girl that he has impregnated but not married. What is even worse is Harold has laundered money from his so called patron charity to fund relatives of the girl that Tim is sleeping with. He used his donor's money to give to one of the girl's relatives or associates in his $800 for Filipino father video. His basis for this choice in his own words is quote the guy works hard unquote. He also said he was giving this guy the money because he was a good father. Harold never saw how he was as a father. These don't seem like special reasons as people in the comments mention. I mean, was that the only guy on the island that Harold saw working hard or had a big family? I doubt it. Or maybe the reason he was chosen was to reward Christy indirectly for being with his friend Tim K. She seemed to thank Tim and give him a look after the donation was made. This is surely a conflict of interest when your so-called charity fund is being funneled to a girl through her relatives that your buddy is banging. It seems like prostitution with extra steps. I.e. instead of paying money directly to a girl in a poor country to sleep with you or your friend you pay it indirectly into the hands of her relatives or associates and then sleep with her. It seems a bit sketchy. So what do you think guys? Is giving patron money to relatives or friends of the girl your buddy is sleeping with a conflict of interest or is it a legitimate use of a fund set up for charity? Is it better to give to people with no sexual ties to you or your friends or is what Harold did perfectly okay in your book? Please feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with the latest goings on with Harold and Mr. Bold. Remember, this is the only place you'll get to hear the stuff that they don't want you to know and are trying to censor. Have a good day and bye for now. Also thanks to all the new subscribers including Yowie Australia, as well as great comments by Sam S, Lord Gaylord Ondor, Spiritual Drifter, and me, me.